One core belief in paganism is that life is filled with cycles of birth, death, and rebirth. So it's not surprising that the story of how the Sacred Path Center began starts with the end of Evenstar, a longtime metaphysical shop in the Twin Cities. Sacred Path Center board member C.J. Stone was part of the birth, or rebirth, of a pagan community center, while both Evenstar and his wife Louie, who owned it, passed beyond the veil. I spent a long time working with Evenstar, the precursor to Sacred Paths. And so when Evenstar ended, then I was sort of in a position to bring whatever experience I had with that. And of course I was uh, close with the woman who ran the store. I was married to her for 18 years. So I had some idea of what goes on in a retail operation in a de facto community center. Because Evenstar was there, other things came and went, and it was a de facto community center. Sacred Paths Center founder Tisha McGee also worked at Evenstar. Soon after she heard the store was to close, she found a building for rent that could help her realize her dream of opening a metaphysical store. And so my husband and I came and looked at it and realized how big it is and how beautiful it is and said, that's far too much space for what we want to do in the retail space. We could put a community center in there. Tisha wondered if creating a pagan community center was really possible. <laughs> and we brought in a bunch of friends who all have good heads on their shoulders and business savvy and so forth and basically told them nitpick our plan because we had a full business plan, we had the whole thing, and tear it apart, tell us why we can't make this happen. And while they poked holes in it, at the end everyone said, but we think you can do it. With that vote of confidence, Tisha and a small group of volunteers moved fast. And then once they all kind of started saying, yeah, we think this can happen, we started spreading the word around the community of what we wanted to do and started a Facebook page and a PayPal account and said, if you feel inclined, donate money. And within, that was the first week of January that we started fundraising. And by the first week of February, we had, I think it was $1,500 raised, which was more than enough to um, cover our moving expenses and so forth. On January 31st, the day Evenstar closed their doors, Tisha signed the lease for Sacred Pass Center. On February 13th, she opened the doors. Tisha says having the right board of directors was key to making this happen in such a short time. Um, ours, we, our first board we chose, hand chose, Paul and my, my husband and I hand chose each and every one of them, um, and we tried to get a really wide variety of skills and of contacts. We wanted as many different groups recognized as we could possibly imagine. And we know we could have been much more broad with that, but we we're also pulling up people that we knew and could say, hey, we have this crazy project and we want your help with it. And they would say, okay. <laughs> CJ, who in the past had tried unsuccessfully to launch a community center, said it's vital to have a building picked out before you approach others. As you get 25 people in here and they're all looking and saying, well, I could do this here and I could do that there. And this space down here could be for that. And then they're excited about it and they're involved in it. When it's the other thing, it's like, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to buy a house? Are you going to buy an old church? Are you going to rent a place? Where are you going to rent it? Blah, 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 blah. And then they start arguing about the details of that. And we all know where the devil is. Well, when they've got a building and it's right in front of them, is this good enough? Yes. And then they're, you're proceeding. And that's my advice to anyone who wants to start a pagan community center where they are. Do it or don't. Start something and get people on board with you. In part five of Sacred Spaces, we talk with Tisha and CJ about surviving Sacred Path Center's first financial crisis and how they developed a financially sustainable model that other communities can emulate. For PNC Minnesota, I'm Kara Schultz.